Hi guys, uh, so today I thought I would talk about me and you and uh, also women and how are we. So um, there's been a trend or a theme last few weeks uh, building into quite a big question mark in terms of uh, females, feminine presentation, yeah, gender, you know, all that stuff, gender, transgender rights, um, it's not about this, um, not pro, I'm not pro. And uh, also, um, yeah, uh, talking about, like, say, uh, female sexuality and enlightenment reached through sex and tantric stuff and female gurus and, wow. Um, I suppose I'm looking a lot like that today, so I think I would like to sort of innovate and um, reinvent my channel uh, because I don't want to be put in a box because... You see, I've spoken to a lot of women and I've been very open and mindful and through some women's circles and women's work uh, here in Peru with other people from overseas mainly, I have found out that there is actually quite a lot of sore, hurtful and sad things and bad feelings covered up with makeup and hair and sometimes very uncomfortable and unhealthy dialogues also between each other, also between different women. Um, so I went to two parties, i got to tell you. Uh, I went to a couple of parties. Uh, so one was a hen's night, so it was a party for women only, and the other one was a wedding. And my partner also went to the masculine counterpart of that. So what did the boys do? So the boys went to the hot springs and uh, basically, never mind, it was just a nice uh, normal sort of uh, masculine chat. A masculine group just, just talking about whatever, you know, just their stuff and their visions and their memories or dreams. And then what did we girls do? So, I mean, I went to a uh, women's party accepting, accepting that it was a women's party and uh, thinking that we were going to just uh, talk about love or life or how the wife-to-be met the husband-to-be or something like that and uh, no most of this was just about sex it was about the orgasm and it was about female liberation and it wasn't really what I um, felt comfortable with and yeah all of those uh, things never fit, fit with me never fit with me and I think also my gender dysphoria was in part because I didn't want to imitate other women around me and I didn't want to become like them, you know, because also a very vivacious woman um, by my mother and being around, how can I say, um, certain type, types of tribes, I just never really believed a, a girl to be, but a very uh, sensual, hot and uh, kind of praised alpha with the big lips and the huge hair and, you know, giant wallet and a nice house and it kind of sort of grained, grained, grinded me down and inevitably I sort of started to see that I wasn't really me, that I was just becoming somebody else and then eventually I could pass as a modern day woman and now, I mean, like I found that my inner voice or my gentleness or my naivety just hasn't had the time to shine or grow because of me wanting to imitate what a good-looking alpha sporty or sexy woman in a modern day is and uh, to me I feel that modern day view of women in the media and social media is incredibly gross and I think that it's very very corrupting and it's sad and I know it's funny to get like the lips done like this and the TikTok videos and the hair like that and it is actually something that has come to my attention for years now. It's like, um, as a woman on Facebook, for example, I get so many disgusting ads, like how to make my boobs look bigger, how to make my stomach look smaller, mm, you know, like relationship advice from some burnt out, angry old woman about how to keep a man, you know, like all of that really scary stuff. And also, I see that a lot of children now, this is very... Uh, Alarm, it's not alarming, it's very gross, uh, are trying to imitate uh, this culture and there's so many children with makeup now and a lot of these makeup um, and hair videos are actually um, made for children and they tell boys to be girls. They don't necessarily tell girls to be boys. That's interesting. Okay, let's, why not touch on that? Like say, there are so many 
uh, male to female cross dresses in it is just such a huge uh, giant thing um, for 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 that it's a huge window but like say a girl that just wants to dress in boys clothes and keep it down and wear her cap on backwards nobody cares about this so I'm gonna tell you this yeah you know like uh, also because I feel that I'm sort of also part of it because I used to uh, be a huge major supporter of uh, trans rights and I had a uh, trans partner we even made a business together selling trans gear um, and I was not just who I am today I mean like I was really really like a worthwhile person man like how much heart and care I had for that whole community my god I was really really in it I was so obsessed with it like the gay culture and the gay scene was like probably where a lot of my youth has gone actually and um, I think it's not just about being straight gay uh, or bi or whatever it's not actually all of this is just disgusting it is all just dirty it's just about you like look at you like your inner innocence my god like there are so many people that never ask about who they are they're just so busy being categorized and being seen or looked at as this or that and it all just boils down to fashion and then I see uh, also the other side of the world struggling and yeah we do have 10 million women on OnlyFans which is basically porn and uh, <laughs> it's like self-made self -made sex businesses and then on the other side of the world like Iran is fighting for women to not wear hijab oh wow and it's just so crazy out there and uh, a lot of this um, fame seeking also feminine you know with the tantric goddesses and the money-making machines is violence I think that is very violent to me now and it is all just based on the money and obsession with how much one is worth so we are devalu devaluing ourselves and we are not trusting in who we are and we're just keeping on pushing this machine further towards its inevitable demise and then I also think like say of me as a woman and like asking myself like at the tender age of 37 hey what do you want you know and it's not really I think maybe just me or, or you if you can identify with anything I'm saying here I think it's just like the whole world it's like the whole world and um, I think we're all kind of asking us to like what am I and um, the women you know like who runs the world girls you know it's not just like like we it's not that we can we don't control anything but the moon is a controlling element in astrology it's a feminine element it's like there is a part of women's psyche that uh, protects retains and in a way directs energy it's not just like say the dudes making the fashion for the girls to wear it's actually never really been that way it's all female made fashion uh, no it's the man made no it's a female made fashion so basically women have experimented and found a way to be more attractive beautiful and interesting for men and yeah you know that closes the book it's just like that's it it's just like we women are uh, consciously uh, causing our own demise you know so that whole finger pointing at the it, you see like most men don't even like that which women are becoming I don't see that as a big threat like I, I used to be trained as a girl to think if you are not 36 24 36 no man will like you I used to actually get that from people around me including my own brother and my mother you know so it's like you have to look the part to fit the bill you know you have to dress in the way look just how shitty is it like whoa like why did we ever allow that to happen as people as a society as a human world and I don't think it's just women either it's just like an ugly territorial thing so to me fashion is actually something that comes from war I believe that fashion is a war what do I mean it's like the team colors how you carry yourself what you're saying as politics here it's not just about you looking good in front of someone personally it's not about pleasing your husband or getting the, it's not about any it's war it's politics it's control and um, I think that women are just as responsible for many of these uh, things crimes even that are happening today in the world um, because they uh, wouldn't rather 
make sense of themselves maybe and uh, the womb is a very programmable uh, part of us and I feel that um, this is something very occult this is like occult studies you know what the womb does and how it produces realities and universes but also by using the womb and significantly or not inefficiently just carelessly we actually forget who we are and that's also yeah that's it like a lot of women are broken people because their womb is biologically and physiologically not respected as well so I think it's just a warring world you know so it's not just us girls with a fashion and some kind of emblematic way of being a woman I don't think it's just that I don't think it's about possession or vanity or pride or privilege or even some kind of a consumerist um, mechanical capitalist ego versus condor type of situation I actually don't even think it's about this I actually feel it's about trauma and yeah um, men do cause damage in that regard and we don't know that maybe that is also something to speak of that is also something to say transcending early childhood trauma for me for example has been almost almost impossible <laughs> almost unthinkable and then it, it eventually happened you know so like say um, coming out of a very very uh, hard yard um, it, um, my god my mind eventually started working again like in my 30s because there was so much trauma to transcend so there's a zombifying way that sex works we don't want it to be that and we pretend we got the rule book and we got the memo and we are empowered for sex and sexuality and even predatorism and I know there's lots of resourceful women that are making incredible money out of it these days and sexuality exploitation of oneself or other um, for money and status and power and fame is actually just a mainstream thing and most of internet is seeded with it you know it's like a fungus it's just growing everywhere so like how do we uh, get through this as women and how do we also protect our women and children and our children, children's children, like what do we do also like as people also what can men do to protect other women, I mean how can we build better community and society, it's not just about going out there getting the bucks and you know coming back to a sort of a home anymore because we know that doesn't work, the hero complex doesn't work just going around in circles you know till you go till you die and that's because the masculine and feminine are out of balance and the whole ecosystem knows that um, so maybe I'll do a couple more videos I mean I'm sorry it's like a little bit of a lowly introduction and maybe it's not particularly needed in the space and time but I just really wanted to talk a little bit about this today <laughs>